Hello folks and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. We are in the newly refurbished video editing suite today. X-Star, lithium ion, AA rechargeable batteries and a charger sent for review. Let's get right into it. Let's do the unboxing. Um, but yeah, look at this, a rather heavy duty USB-C style cable. So what we have here are some X-Star high capacity rechargeable lithium ion batteries and on the tin they say they are 4150 milliwatt hours at 1.5 volts and AA size. Let's get these little beasties on charge, uh, let's plug them in and here we go we go through a cycle and we have one two three four red LEDs and we can see um, here the LEDs are flashing green on all of these batteries. So we'll put this to one side for a minute, we'll let them charge up, and as soon as they're charged, what we'll do is we'll bring in the IMAX B6 Pro and we'll discharge one of these cells and we'll see how good the quoted watt hours of these X-Star lithium ion AA cells are. All of the X-Star batteries now have green LEDs on them. So this is showing us that everything is nicely fully charged. Let's take out one of these X-Star batteries. Let's fit it into a battery holder. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm just putting a little spade terminal in the back of here. Um, and we're just gonna use this one terminal here. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've put quite a fat hairy capacitor across in parallel. Is it seems as though as soon as you start drawing any current from the battery, you end up with a voltage spike. So we'll put that on an oscilloscope in a little while and see what we're actually getting. But it was fooling the, the, the IMAX B6 into thinking that it was getting nine or so volts out, um, which is really quite interesting. Anyway, good news is, is the battery is now on tests. It thinks it's a nickel metal hydride battery, a little single cell nickel, nickel metal hydride. We're sucking half an amp. When we get down to less than 1.3 volts, uh, the system will then turn off. And to be fair, this should be regulated, so it should keep, uh, it should stay at pretty much 1.5 volts all the way for as long as it possibly can. Uh, leave it with me and we'll get back to you in just a moment. Okay, folks, this is what we've ended up with. Uh, so this is the amount of current that's been drawn out of the battery. 1.8 amp hours, effectively. That's actually pretty good going, really, for something this size. I'm quite impressed. And the voltage dropped down to 0.96 of a volt, at which point this decided that was the end of things. And it was running at half an amp, if you remember correctly, for 217 minutes. So pretty good going. Uh, let's do the math and figure out what that equates to and whether or not it's anything close to the 4,150 milliwatt hours advertised by Xstar. And then let's get this on an oscilloscope, have a look and see what kind of noise is coming out of these, because there's obviously some kind of DC to DC converter that's living somewhere inside this lithium ion cell. So here's the X-Star battery set up on the oscilloscope. Now this is a Hantec 5202P oscilloscope, 100 meg, two channel digital storage scope. Lovely little bit kit actually. So what I've done is I've, I've got our cap here, it's disconnected currently, and I've put an entirely resistive load in parallel with the output of the X-Star battery. And then I've put my scope probes on the positive and negative terminals. And what you can see on the screen, first of all, let me explain to you, we are fully AC coupled, so there is no DC bias on this at the moment. Uh, we have the probe configured to times one operation and just double checking the scope probe here is indeed set to times one configuration. So that's all looking good. Waveforms are just a little bit noisy. So we're currently set to 20 millivolts per division and we have one, two, three, maybe four. So almost 80 millivolts here, four times 20, almost 80 millivolts between the top of the waveform and the bottom of the waveform. If we take the capacitor and we make that connection, you can see that waveform noise 
drops down to almost nothing. If we remove the capacitor again, boom, there we go. We have that same waveform back. So we've got quite a noisy output from this battery. If you look at the frequency of the noise that's coming out of it, it's about 25 kilohertz, which probably makes sense, 25 kilohertz for a uh, DC switching device. So yeah, there's definitely a little bit of noise coming out of these batteries. Um, probably won't cause you too many problems, but if you go up through the spectrum, uh, so if we so if we um, increase the frequency here and uh, have a look at this, we can see not only have you got a 25 kilohertz, uh, but then you've got multiple ringing uh, taking place here. So we've got even higher frequencies superimposed in that 25 kilohertz oscillation. In fact, potentially what we could do here, if I get the trigger level set into the right um, position. We might even be able to, there we go. So we've got another 250 kilohertz signal superimposed inside that 25 kilohertz signal. So yeah, it's it's sort of noisy and, and it's mucky. Um, and, it's, and it's a bit of a shame really. Uh, so if you have, say for instance, if you have something like a Wi-Fi camera, uh, there's a strong likelihood that this is going to interfere with your RF signal. So anything that's got an RF signal, this, this may cause interference. So interesting to see all of that. And here we go, I'll just show you again if I connect the capacitor. So effectively smooth out that. There we go, look at that. We go almost zero noise they're limited for space obviously inside the battery but it's just down to the filtering that they're putting on the output of that battery there capacitor in parallel capacitor out capacitor in parallel capacitor out so yeah you can see that uh, that they're definitely a little bit noisy so let's do the math let's see if these x star batteries have the capacity that they claim they have all right, folks, so from the previous experiment, we established that we were seeing about 1.38 volts and the battery dumped out 1,814 milliamps, which is equivalent to 2,503 2,503. Not quite the 4,150 milliwatt hours that the battery claims. And if we were to remove perhaps some of the voltage drop uh, through the cables and things like that, and let's say it was actually 1.5 volts at, let's say, 1,814 milliamp hours, what do we get then? We get 2,721 milli watt hours so yeah not bad not bad at all if you take some of these um uh, 18650 cells uh, like this one here for instance this is a japanese version i think this is rated at about 3000 um at about three amp hours or 3000 milliamp hours or so and considering the size difference i mean really and truly Pretty good going, pretty good going, X-Star. Well done with the batteries. And so the other thing to consider here is that this X-Star battery charger can contend with 1.5 volt lithium ion charging and also 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride cells as well, both in AA and AAA formats. And the other thing that I really liked about it was the fact that it has this little finger hole in the back of it. So you can poke your finger through and you can pop those batteries out. So it's ergonomically designed, which is quite nice indeed. But yeah, ultimately a very nice little charger and a very interesting batteries. So the other thing I wanted to show you here, these are the early X-Star batteries. Now here's the interesting thing about these early X-Star batteries. Uh, again, uh, 1.5 volt lithium ion, 3,300 milliwatt hour. They were driving a Blink camera. Uh, this is the Amazon Blink camera. And they were driving my Blink camera outside for a period of time and it was all working okay. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, bearing in mind this Blink camera is 
sealed. It's got a nice rubber seal around the outside of it here. Rubber sheaths over all of the uh, over, over the ports and whatnot. But <laughs> have a look in here. Look what happened. These batteries didn't do very well outside in the blink camera. Um, and sadly, uh, they've caused all kinds of corrosion issues in my blink camera. If you look down inside here, it's all really quite mucky. And I'm pretty sure that this wasn't water ingress. I'm pretty sure that this was some kind of leakage taking place. And the other thing I wanted to show you is sadly, with these early X-Star batteries. If I get a multimeter out, so this battery here is showing a nice 1.5 volts DC. That's good. This battery, however, <laughs> this battery, however, is completely dead. So yeah, one of these batteries failed and not only did it fail, it just killed it. Well, I think it leaked um, and, it, and it's killed, sadly, a reasonably expensive uh, camera an outdoor camera so yeah a little bit unhappy with uh, with the early uh, X star battery performance fingers crossed fingers crossed the new ones are much better ladies and gentlemen thanks ever so much for watching as always make sure you give us a good old thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and we look forward to seeing you in the next video cheers and beers have a wonderful weekend bye for now